This here is the Be Quiet Pure Rock 3. It's black, it's got a black plastic cover topping of the single tower 55 fins high heatsink, which is like already minus one degree right there. And it's got an all black fan spinning at up to 2000 RPM and pushing up to 59.6 CFM at up to 2.41 millimeters of H2O. So all black, no RGB, this should be my thing, right? Yet despite this one being part of the same series and sharing like almost all of its name, it is not simply the non-pro version of the Pure Rock Pro 3. There are way too many differences between the two to make them like easily comparable at all, if at all. But let's start at the beginning. There are two retail versions of this, the Pure Rock 3 Black and the Pure Rock 3 LX. And because the LX has a very, very different fan, I am not going to group them into a single review. The LX will get its own video in like a week or two. And who knows, maybe the performance enhancing RGB power of the LX fans can save Be Quiet's Pure Rock line but I, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here. The number one reason why this Pure Rock 3 and the Pro version are not alike, at the bottom of the Pure Rock, we'll find four black copper heat pipes traveling up the 155 millimeter high tower, which is already two less than the other one. But the point is the Pure Rock 3's got a direct touch base and that is a very big difference. Now, there are similarities. For example, we still got that miniature heatsink covering as much of the top part of the base as possible, which is like a very be quiet -y thing to do. And we got the same fan and so on. But due to them having different base styles, it's really not as if you could say that this is like the smaller four heat pipe single tower version and the other one just scales up from there. The differences are going to be way bigger and sometimes really not the way that you think they should be. But before we talk about the benchmarks, the Pure Rock 3 comes in a very be quiet -y type of box and includes all the installation hardware for all nowadays relevant sockets. There isn't going to be any thermal paste included, but be quiet pre-applies that one onto the base. To get the Pure Rock 3 going on Intel, we need to take the provided backplate and shove the Intel screws through the holes, outer grooves for LGA 1851 and 1700, and inner ones for older sockets, and then fix them on the other side with the rubber O-rings. After positioning the backplate behind the motherboard, add the spacer, followed by the Intel retention brackets left and right of the socket, arrow pointing towards the CPU, and screw them down. Over on AMD, we need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets, and from there we have a choice. Be Quiet includes retention brackets with and without the special 8mm AMD offsets. And not to open a can that has already been opened like a thousand times before, if you're using Ryzen 5, 7 or 9000, use the 8mm offset holes. This will center the cooler above the actual heat source and we will later see why that's a blessing. Anyway, add the spacers, retention brackets on top and screw them down. From there on both sockets, slap the cooler on top, screw it down and don't forget the fan. Speaking of which, the fan on the Pure Rock 3 uses the same clips we found on the Pro version. So yeah, you, you can actually grab these. Great improvement. Yeah, let's, let's call it an improvement. Oh, and Be Quiet does not include a second fan clip set, which I find ridiculous. These things cost like a few cents. Just add them so that users can upgrade to a push-pull version of the cooler. I, I, I don't get why, not, why that's not standard. We should shame them for the shame, shame on you. And before we cover the benchmarks and compare this thing to the Pro line, let's talk compatibility, which is really easy. The cooler is 155 millimeter high overall, and it's a single tower, single fan cooler. So no RAM compatibility issues that could even come up. So yeah. I told you, it's gonna be easy. To benchmark the cooler on Intel, we used our regular test bench using a 3900K and three presets, 120, 250, and 320 watts. We start off at full speed to see what the cooler can potentially do, and then we slowly lower the fan speed in 10% steps, while slowing down the noise at each step to create a noise to performance curve. And before anybody thinks Be Quiet created a miracle over here, 320 watts is off the table for this one. I, I, it couldn't handle this type of load. Starting off at 120 watts running through the socket, or in other words, gaming. And, and yes, I do need to find a way to make this sentence like as long as freaking possible to show off the complete graph without making the scroll action way too quick to for anybody to see anything. And here, the Be Quiet Pure Rock 3 managed to keep the chip at 38.2 degrees C above ambient. Now, 
That's a surprising result. I honestly expected it to be better. Sure, you could argue that it landed next to similarly equipped coolers. I mean, the Freezer 34 Esports and Hyper 212 Halo are also single tower, single fan, direct touch coolers. And all of that makes sense. But considering how old they are, I thought Be Quiet managed to do something here, which would have pushed it away from coolers that were released like... Uh, a decade ago? Compared to the Pro version, it's a 3.3 degrees C loss, something that I also didn't expect considering it's direct touch versus uh, nickel plated. Another important comparison will still be the Freezer 36. Sure, it's a dual fan cooler, but compatibility wise, they are pretty much identical, and price wise, <laughs> we will get to that. Anyway, compared to that one, that's a 4.4 degrees C loss. Rather brutal. And the only comparison I have at hand from Be Quiet themselves, which would make sense here, would be the older single tower, single fan Dark Rock 4. And there it's a loss of 1.2 degrees C. And I don't know if you see a pattern here, but except for the Hyper 212 comparison, it's a loss, loss, loss and loss so far. So. It doesn't look particularly interesting, but let's see what's up with the noise. At 120 watts and across its whole fan speed range, the Be Quiet Pure Rock 3 landed right in between the Scythe Moog and 5 Ref C, another single tower, single fan alternative, and the Dark Rock 4. So it's not bad. It does clearly outperform the Cooler Master Hyper 212, that's already a good thing. But thanks to the two towers and two fans, the Pro version is so much offset, I could set the bias to let's say 85% at max uh, at thermal throttle level to normalize the noise to the same max and the resulting temperature offset would be huge. But similarly to the Pure Rock 3 Pro review and its conclusion, Be Quiet's final boss is still the Freezer 36. It's not comparable. Even with the same restrictions and compatibility, the Freezer 36 just wipes the floor with both of them. At 250 watts running through the socket, the situation improves. Well, I wouldn't say dramatically, and if you ask me, it's like thanks to the direct touch base, but to get to my point, now the Pure Rock 3 keeps the chip at 70.6 degrees C above ambient, now outperforming the older Dark Rock 4, including the Pro version, and coolers we used to compare it to, like the Freezer 34 Single and Halo 212, are out of the race. So the situation definitely improved, and funnily enough, compared to the Pro version, we are now looking at a 3.2 degree C loss, which is like 0.1 or the absolute minimum less than we had at 120 watts, which I also didn't expect. But uh, yeah, better but not revolutionary so far. The noise to performance graph for 250 watts looks rather empty, but almost all the coolers we used for the 120 watts comparison are either out of the race, or like in the case of the Mugen 5 Ref C, it is barely hanging on and it could only pull off 250 watts at 100% fan speed, hence there is no noise to performance curve possible. Anyway, compared to what we had before, it looks like an improvement to me. The Pure Rock 3 is glued to the Pro version, just never outperforming it. And of course the Pro can go on and on and on, improving the performance at the cost of noise. But again, here comes the Freezer 36 wiping the floor with both of them, just not at such a huge margin towards the lower end. And now, before we get to AMD, where we benchmark using a 7950X3D and we measure the achieved average clock speed across all cores for any given fan speed, a little story. About a month ago, or like a week before the Pro version release, I was asked if I could look at my AMD results to verify what other reviewers found. Because at that point I, I haven't made like the graphs yet, I, I make them later. Anyway, across the board, the Pure Rock 3 wipes the floor with the Pure Rock Pro 3. If you normalize it down to about 37.5 dB, which is the max that the Pure Rock 3 can yell at using my dB meter, it actually wins against the Pro version. And to add some salt into that wound, if you make the Pro 3 spin faster and faster and faster, it will never achieve the average clock speed of the smaller one, which is weird. It's definitely a result of AMD or the X3D chips favoring quick heat removal over just tanking the heat away, aka direct touch versus nickel plated. But yeah, in the case of my 7950X3D, you are better off taking a non-pro over a pro. I kid you not. But to make things more globally relevant, it's not, let's say, good. It is in line with the RZ620, 
that one can just go higher than that and it's slightly better if you make them spin slower but overall it's yeah it does the job but not in a fantastic way overall the whole pure rock 3 lineup is i don't know oh underwhelming i mean credit where credit is due none of them i would describe as loud i, I really wouldn't and the pure rock 3 black just isn't loaded as well. But the performance is like, yeah, un underwhelming. I get that this is the, the budget line, this is supposed to be the budget line, but why release something in 2025 that can't outperform something under all circumstances that was released a decade ago? Take the Frieza 34 esports. And yeah, by the way, that one was already replaced. The Frieza 36 is out. Now, price-wise, I think the Pure Rock 3 is very interesting. Right now, it's retailing for 35 euros. And I could now argue that, hey, the Frieza 36 is more expensive. It, it might be a lot better, like a lot better, but it's more expensive MSRP. But as somebody pointed out in the Pro 3 review, the current street price for a Frieza 36 Black is 26.99. $26 so yeah, there we are. On one hand, the Pure Rock 3 isn't particularly good, neither in Intel nor AMD, it is particularly good, just in AMD it, it beats the Pro version, which doesn't make sense, but yeah, I'm, I'm digressing here. It's not a bad cooler, it's just a cooler for very small or very low wattage chips. Take a, a 245 non-K, this would be a, a good pair. The problem is the Freezer 36 wipes the floor with any of them in any category, price, performance, noise and everything. Uh, yeah. There we are. But okay, this should be everything on the Pure Rock 3. And at this point, a huge thank you to Be Quiet for sending them over. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server. So if you want to join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership. So if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. Except for the NDA stuff, because, you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to buy all the available Freezer 36s. Not that I need more of them, it's just as long as that thing is available, nobody else can compete. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Freezer 36. Very different cooler, much better cooler. Hope to see you on the next one. Bye bye.